to pass from curse to blessing. I believe there are many of you here tonight who are fighting something that you don't fully understand in your own life. Some kind of frustration, something that every time you're about to succeed intervenes and keeps you from success. Something that holds you back from being a complete person, from being completely free, from being able to serve the Lord the way you would wish to, from leading a life of real victory. I believe in many cases, the problem that you're fighting with, that you've never diagnosed, you've never come fully to grips with, is that there is a curse over your life. And as I turned to the scripture, I was amazed at how much the Bible has to say about it and how little has been preached in most of the places and congregations that I'm familiar with. Both blessings and curses are usually expressed in words, either spoken words or written words. But those words are not normal, ordinary words. They are words that are charged with supernatural power. And the power may be the power of God, or it may be the power of Satan. And one of the features about both cursings and blessings is when they come, they usually continue from generation to generation to generation. <laughs> so that a person who is experiencing either blessing or cursing may not easily discern where it comes from because it may be in the past even hundreds of years, like a flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without cause shall not alight. That's very important. If there is a curse, there's a cause for it. And in many cases, in order to be released from the curse, it's important to discover the cause. The curse never comes causeless. And the source of both blessings and curses is clearly stated, and I'll read them both. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 and 2. Now it shall come to pass, if you will diligently hearken <coughs> to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. What is the basic cause of blessing? It's listening diligently to the voice of God and doing what he said. That's why God blessed Abraham. He said, because you have obeyed my voice. And then it says all these blessings will come upon you. Really, you don't need to chase the blessing. What you need to do is meet the condition. God will take care of the blessing. And then in verse 15 and onwards, we come to the curses. But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. What's the cause of the curses? Not listening to the voice of the Lord and not doing what he says. It's very, very simple, basically. Here's my summary of the blessings. Exaltation, being lifted up. Health, reproductiveness, reproducing in every area of your life. Your family, your farm, your animals, everything. Prosperity, victory, and God's favor. One of the simple statements of blessing is, you'll be above only and not beneath. You'll be the head and not the tail. And I sat down and worked that out once, and I thought, what does it mean to be the head and not the tail? And it's like this, the head makes the decision, the tail gets dragged around. So which end are you, the head or the tail? Are you making the decisions? Are you taking the initiative? Are you determining the way things happen? Or are you at the mercy of circumstances under financial pressure, health pressure, family pressure, being just dragged around? If you're the tail, it's a curse. If you're the head, it's a blessing. Now let's look at the 
summary of the curses. And so, first of all, humiliation. Second, failure to reproduce in any area of your life. Barrenness is a curse without any qualification. Mental and physical sickness, family breakdown, divorce, alienation of children and so on, poverty, which is a curse, not a blessing. If you think poverty is a blessing, why do you work so hard to get rid of it? And if you think sickness is a blessing, why do you go to the doctor to get rid of it? Why involve that poor doctor in fighting against God and removing the blessing from your life? Defeat, oppression, failure, and God's disfavor. I hope I can say this without being offensive, but if you want to look at a very conspicuous family that bears all the marks of a family curse, it's the Kennedy family in America. Now, we come to the punchline, the practical, how to pass from curse to blessing. First of all, you have to understand, full provision has already been made through the death of Jesus on the cross. That's the way that God has made provision for every human need, including this one. If you look in Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That, in order that, the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Notice the exchange. The death of Jesus on the cross, the atonement, was an exchange in which all the evil due to us came upon Christ, that all the good due to him might be made available to us, whatever aspect you look at. He was wounded that we might be healed. He died that we might have life. He was made sin that we might be made righteous. He was rejected that we might be accepted. And here, he was made a curse that we might enter into the blessing. That's the basis of God's provision for the problem that I've been speaking about tonight. And you'll notice that in that verse 13, the word curse occurs three times. Christ has redeemed us from the curse having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Brothers and sisters, if a curse is so real that Christ had to be made a curse on the cross for us, then don't entertain the thought that there's no reality in a curse. God wouldn't have made provision at such cost for our deliverance from a curse if there was nothing to be delivered from. You understand? But it took the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ to provide deliverance from the curse. So that's the basis of deliverance. All our deliverance has to be based on faith in what Christ has done for us on the cross. Thank God the reason why he was made a curse was that we might be delivered from the curse. Now, you need to bear in mind that after you've been delivered, you still have to go on meeting the conditions, which are what? Listening to God's voice, and doing what he says, very simple. And that's in the New Testament, Jesus said in John 10, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So that's the prescription for blessing. But in order to live in blessing, if there's a curse over your life, you must first be redeemed from the curse. You must be delivered. Now, through the death of Jesus, it's already legally ours, you understand? He's already obtained it for us. What we have to do is move from the legal to the experiential. We have to get it working in our lives. Now I want to tell you how to do that, all right? Very often we need to ascertain the cause or the source of the curse. Not always, but very often. Uh, maybe it'll come by supernatural revelation. Many times it does. Now, I'm not saying you have to know, but in many cases, God wants us to know what we are being delivered from, how it came upon us. If God shows you, then you act on what he shows you. 
Now the process of release. The basic pattern is stated in four words which begin with RE. This just happens to be so. Recognize, repent, renounce, and resist. Recognize your problem and its cause. Repent of anything that ever opened you to it. Renounce the curse and resist every attempt of Satan to keep you under the curse. Now, more, more in more detail, specific steps. First of all, establish a clear scriptural basis. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse, having been made a curse for us. There are other scriptures which I just mentioned. Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood. Colossians 1, 13 and 14. God has delivered us from the domain of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. 1 John 3, 8, a beautiful short scripture, the second half of the verse, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's good news. All right, now this is what you need to do, very simply. Confess your faith in Christ, because he's the high priest of our confession. Commit yourself to obedience, because that's the condition for continuing in blessing. Confess any known sin of yourself or your ancestors. Like my aunt was a fortune teller, or my grandmother was in Christian science, or my father was a Freemason. Many, many different possibilities. And you have to identify yourself with the sin in your family that brought it upon your family. You understand? You confess it on behalf of your family. Forgive all other persons. And maybe the very person that was the cause of the curse. Because if you don't forgive, unforgiveness is a barrier to the answer to your prayer. Jesus said, when you stand praying, Forgive if you have anything against anybody, okay? That leaves out nothing and nobody. Remember, forgiveness is a decision, it's not an emotion. Simply, it's tearing up the IOUs. Number six, renounce all contact with the occult, or with secret societies, and get rid of contact objects. You cannot keep in your house anything that in any way binds you to the occult. Images, charms, uh, Buddhas, Ouija boards, tarot cards, a whole host of things. Moses warned Israel, he said, if you take an accursed thing into your house, you become accursed like the thing. And finally, step number seven, release yourself in the name of Jesus, because the Word of God says, whatever we release on earth shall be released in heaven, all right? Whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. <laughs>